Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTube. Uh, this is Home Lee, and I'm doing a little video to uh, go along on my channel and with the uh, Thunderdome Network channel. I'm going to apologize for the sound in the background. Uh, I've got my 3D printer going. I've got uh, a little something that I'm going to print up and test for a video that will be coming out here shortly. Uh, but today I am doing this video in response to Ryan Engelstead's uh, video on primaries. Uh, Rob sort of got the, uh, the ball rolling with us for talking about our favorite pistol blasters, our first two mods and things like that. So Ryan then moved on to the next natural discussion uh, to talk about primaries and what our favorite primaries are. Uh, what uh, I'm going to do is, is kind of open it up uh, to discuss a little bit more about choosing your primary and what you want to do with it. Uh, I have three blasters here in front of me that uh, represent different portions of the hobby. Uh, we have a spring powered rival blaster with the Artemis. Got a flywheel powered blaster uh, that fires elites with the Infinus. And we've got a Springer uh, powered elite blaster over here with the CETA. Uh, and these are just kind of representative of, of some different aspects and things of the hobby. A uh, couple of things that I'm missing, I don't have an air blaster here of any kind. Uh, you have a couple of different types of air blasters. Uh, you have ones like the uh, Rapid Madness and the Halo MA5 from Boomco or the Destiny from Busby or the Mag Strike or the uh, Rapid Fire AS20 from Nerf that fire a whole lot of darts really, really quickly. Uh, then you have your uh, your Panthers, your uh, I guess you could count your Titans, your XBZs, things like that, that fire once and put a lot of power behind it. Of course, the XBZ and the Titan are firing rockets. Uh, the Panther uh, fired uh, mini darts. Uh, so you have some aspects there. Of course, uh, you could get into your HPA, your LPA, that whole debate. Uh, but I'm not COBA, so uh, I'm, I'm not anywhere near an authority on that particular part of the air-powered blasters. And then you have Strangers, which, uh, of course, the cross bolt is a uh, sort of a favorite uh, with that. Cross bolt was, uh, was a pretty fun little blaster. A lot of people use it for integrations now. Uh, you know, there were some problems there. But the cross bolt was kind of a, a fun magfed elite firing string powered blaster. Uh, of course, you had some of the Rebel crossbows, uh, and then you had the Wrath bolt and the uh, Dread bolt in the Zombie Strike line that were technically string powered, but they were firing arrows. Uh, so you had some things like that, and then. Uh, well, what I just got done printing part of, I'm, I'm not all the way there yet, but Captain Slug has graced us with the Esper, uh, which is a string-powered uh, 3D printed blaster that's capable of sort of high-end speeds. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll say the 130 to 150-ish mark, I don't know exactly uh, what the the top end is going to be but you're talking about over 100 fps for a string powered blaster which 
sounds really fun, which is why I've been working on printing one. Uh, and I did just get the notification that my parts had shipped. But we're here, uh, we're going to talk about some popular blaster types. Again, I don't have a uh, flywheel powered rival blaster here with me, but I uh, do have a spring powered one and then a flywheel and a spring powered elite. So what you're looking for for a primary is you want to try to determine what your key role is going to be when you play. Uh, and that could be different if you know you're playing uh, around the house with your friends or if you've got a regular group like the SENC or uh, some of the, the other major groups that meet up in places or if you're playing HVZ. You know, the way that you play uh, in a, a 5v5 or a 30 versus 30 or uh, if you're playing VIP or, uh, you know, King of the Hill or whatever, that's going to be different than how you're going to approach playing HVZ. <coughs> but uh, flywheel powered blasters like the infamous we have here, uh, these typically have uh, high rates of fire. They're relatively easy to get to super stock uh, range. Uh, not necessarily the infamous or the regulator, but your strifes, your rapid strikes, your uh, hyper fires, your elite hyper fires, I should say. Uh, those types of blasters, your ravens, uh, you know, change out the wiring, put in a new cage, maybe put in a new pusher, slap in a lipo. Uh, it does take a little bit of work, but it's not horrendously difficult to get there. Uh, to get into those super stock ranges between, you know, 100, 150 FPS, uh, you know, where you're, you're shooting in a, a performance type manner, but you're still not going to horrendously damage a small child. Uh, of course, this is still stock. You can hear those stock flywheels uh, going in there, but uh, generally have the potential of, of doing some decently high capacity type work. Uh, this is a 30 round drum that comes with the infamous. Uh, you know, we've got 25 round drums and 22 uh, bananas and 18 sticks and such as that. Uh, so, you know, decently high capacity, decently fast firing. You know, a strife, if you leave it semi auto, is capable of firing uh, basically as fast as you can rake the trigger on there. Uh, you can spam darts with them pretty easily, and and you get some some decent performance out of them. So uh, then you know if you step up the rapid fire, the hyper fire, uh, those types of blasters, you have uh, you know potential for way way outrageous fire rates and those kinds of things. Now with uh, some of the developments that are coming along with brushless motors and potential for multi-stage uh, flywheel blasters, you're starting to see them creep up into the 200, the 250, such as that. I, I forget, uh, somebody had the, uh, the Dominator going 250, 300, it might have, I don't think it was hardly 300, but had uh, three stages of flywheels in there and they were getting some pretty ridiculous uh, numbers. So you're starting to see a little more performance come out of the flywheels, but generally uh, your flywheel type person, uh, they're going to be moving fast, they're going to be firing fast, uh, 
and going to be capable of, of giving some pretty good suppressing fire, which, I mean, this is standard batteries, and I don't even know that these are exactly fresh, but I mean, you're not going to win any contests with that, but, you know, if, uh, if you go to, uh, to like Walcom's deleter, uh, where you're getting 44 rounds in almost a second, you know, that's, that's some pretty impressive, suppressive numbers. Uh, next up, uh, I've got the Artemis here. Uh, Artemis isn't just representing uh, Rival or just Springers necessarily, but that's, and if you notice, you pull the trigger, the pump wiggles. That means that it's slam fire. I mean, you can hold the trigger, pull back, push forward, and it fires. Uh, a slam fire type blaster like this, uh, you have some of the advantages of uh, Springer power. You know, when to get ready to fire, you know, I, I roll back, I push forward, this thing's ready to fire. I can carry this around all day, and all I have to do to fire is pop that trigger. Whereas with a flywheeler, you've got to rev up. So you've got that little bit of a pause. Now, this is better for immediate fire and things like that, but with the slam fire, I can pop off several rounds and do a little bit of suppression. Uh, this is the Artemis that I used in End War. Uh, you can see I've still got my little zip tie on there. Uh, I've put the out of darts uh, attachment, stock attachment point on there. I ran a, a blue worker stock, and then I've got the out of darts pump grip there and I, I put a little bit of sandpaper on there to get a little bit of extra grip and then I forget where I bought this but this is actually a piece of Picatinny rail uh, that I bought off of Etsy and I'll have a link in the description below to that but it's Picatinny rail instead of rival rail so I could throw me a light or a side or something like that up there uh, for whatever I needed. Uh, but a Springer uh, is going to be relatively decent for accuracy, not necessarily with rival rounds. Uh, rival rounds are, uh, they're decently accurate, but they're a close to medium range weapon, which for HVZ like End War, that's, this is perfect. And that's, I don't know if I'll run this again or a Hades or what, uh, I've still got a little bit of time to think about that, but uh, Springers uh, tend to be uh, decently easy to upgrade. Uh, not Again, not necessarily the Artemis because you've got a lot of mechanisms in here uh, with these tube-fed magazines and everything, but typically a Springer, you open it up, you take out the old spring, you put a new spring in, close it back, and you're good to go. Uh, you can do other things, patting the plunger head, taking out the AR, uh, do different things to increase the seal. That gets you a little bit better performance. But uh, for the way that I play, typically, uh, having something with slam fire like this, uh, or a rampage, or an alpha trooper, whatever, uh, gives you a little bit of options tactically. Uh, you know, you can fire single shots and get decently accurate results, or if you're needing to do suppressing fire, or if you're trying to spam uh, a horde or something like that, you've got slam fire in it. So, you know, to me, a slam fire springer gives you a lot of versatility on the field. And then our next category, and some of you may uh, complain about me using this as an example uh, for this particular type of blaster. We've got, uh, as an example, my Ceta. I have put the uh, pump grip from Blaster Revolution on there that's available on Thingiverse. Uh, and I've got a Katana mag sitting in it. There's nothing loaded. I've just got it there for looks. Uh, but this represents the high power uh, high range springers. Now, is the Ceta necessarily the best example of that? No. Uh, if you want a really good example, 
then you would look at uh, a Exus 2 or a long shot with the Omega kit or an artifact or a worker breach or an angel breach or some kind of brass breach. Uh, but uh, you also have retaliators with artifact and worker breaches. Uh, you could put, you take the internals out of the CETA and put them into a retaliator and, and have a breach retaliator. You can get the stuff to brass breach the CETA. So uh, we've got this here. You know, these blasters, uh, you know, the CETA, when it comes from the factory, is about a 100 FPS blaster. Uh, so, you know, you're not going to break any hearts or, or mortally wound anybody with this. But you, you've got blasters like OC Nerf's uh, long shot that he just recently finished that represents tons and tons of time and work and effort and research and reiterations and things like that. He's he's worked with long shots for a long, long time and he's pretty familiar with them and uh, he's done a lot of reviews on different parts so he knew the best stuff to put in there and he's got a long shot that'll fire over 300 feet per second. Uh, 300 FPS long shot's pretty flippin' sweet. Uh, but it, it's not difficult to get a breached Springer uh, into the realm of 200, 250, 300 feet per second, uh, you need to have a solid air seal, you need to have a powerful spring. Of course, that means you need to have some powerful arms in order to uh, load that spring back. But, uh, you know, if you look at OC Nerf's 300 long shot, uh, look at Bradley Phillips and his Exus 2 uh, builds that he's done. Uh, Chris Carte and the flipping bird of prey, uh, or his Chrono Mag. You know those type of blasters. You've got a lot of range. You've got accuracy, and, and those types of things. And you could get some unreal distances and accuracy out of this type of blaster. Maybe not this one necessarily. Uh, hopefully when the Omega kit comes out for this, which uh, Jet has been teasing some lately, uh, hopefully with the Omega kit we're going to see 200-250 FPS out of a CETA. Uh, we'll wait and see. But uh, these types of blasters, you know, you're not going to see a lot of these at HVZs because most HVZs have uh, an FPS limit. Uh, some don't even allow uh, modded blasters at all, but uh, you know this. If you really want to reach out and touch somebody, do it accurately. You know the high-powered Springers is where you're going to be. Uh, I have a place in my heart for those. I'm still learning flywheels, but for me, my primary of choice is I. I just love a slam fire Springer. And this Artemis, this is what I carried with me at Endor, really enjoyed it. So, you know, that's, uh, you know, my choice of primary is going to be a Slam Fire Springer. Uh, you know, what do you like? What's your favorite? Uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, I'll have valid, relevant links to different things down in the description. And this has been Homely, wishing you all a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and a very, very peaceful holiday season. Keep flinging that phone.